Now then, and welcome back to another Friday Night Magic. I don't do this often enough at all, Friday Night Magic. I play a little bit of Magic Arena once every couple of days while I'm uh, waiting for something or I'm doing something or I'm having a coffee break or whatever. I never really get a chance to record a proper episode every single week. Once in a while, I do get the time, and here is another episode. Today, I've been saving up all of my in-game gold from just playing regular daily rewards and stuff like that here and there. Every three days, you complete three sets of rewards and get a load of gold. Simple enough. Um, so today, I decided to spend some of that. I've been trying to save it up so that I could use some coin, 5,000 coin, which is technically five packs of Throne of Alderaan. Um, but I get three, and then if I don't win, I get one back. So that's four plus 50 gems. The gems do count towards future things, such as future games like this, and the games that you can't pay cash for, as it were. So, without further ado, without messing about any further, I'm going to go with a ranked draft of the Thrones today. Okay, so technically, this is the second draft of today. The first draft, highlights were, drafted red, knights, haste, equipment, stuff, still got beaten by did not say please um, in one game, and paladins and white knights in another game. This one, however, look what we get with the first pack. A Garruk, the Huntsman. Yes, please. The wilds are primal. So and we're definitely Garruk the Huntsman, and I that is... Like them. Black and green. Black and green. And there's loads of adventures. So Edgewell Innkeeper, totally overpowered. We'll have some of that. Uh, Flaxion Intruder, of course. What's this one, though? Um, reveal a non-card. Non yeah. No, no, no. Black and green. Black and green all the way now. So what do we got here? Black. What's this, Knight? Sacrifice another creature or artifact. Deals two damage to target creature and or planes. That's pretty good. Three mana. Sacrifice a creature or an artifact, and it deals two damage to target creature or planeswalker. That's pretty good removal. Headhunter Elite. Uh, discard a card. You may put that uh, put a card that has an adventure that player owns from exile into that player's graveyard. Okay. Um, so it gets rid of adventures basically. Um, destroy creature with power three or less. Yes, maybe that's better than that one. Or maybe that one is going to be better overall because I can sacrifice creatures to... or sacrifice... I can sacrifice food tokens and things to deal two damage to target creature to finish them off and bits like that. Potential. I do think the destroy target creature is probably straight to the point and should probably be better overall. Uh, Wolf's Qu Quarry three blockers and then when it dies i create food tokens but it's fairly expensive this one creature gets uh plus three plus three and that which is cottage put a creature card from your graveyard on top of your library now garrick destroy target creature draw a card and then that plays it puts it back onto my library if i wanted hedgewood so it's at least three mana of the same it was cast Hedgewalker enters the battlefield with plus one plus one counter on it, making it a three three for three. What? What's the point of that? I don't like it. Eye Collector. Whenever it deals combat on a player, each player puts the top card of the library into the graveyard. Eye Collector would be all right, but no. This guy here could be mono green. Create two white human tokens. Creatures you control get plus one plus one until the end of the turn. I think I'm going to have to go with the a green adventure. Um, black Paladin. At least three black was spent. Get some plus one plus one. Not really that good. Uh, back to nature. Destroy artifact enchantment or whatever. Ginger brute is pretty cool. Um, let's go with the back to nature. So I've got a chance to destroy any artifacts and enchantments that are, uh, are on me that I don't want. Can also give an enchantment away that way. Uh, enter the battlefield. Scry could be a good bomb. Flutter fox. As long as you've got an artifact, it's got flying. Thrill of possibility. Uh, I actually think I will grab that for a sideboard card. 
because I like that card. Um, this knight was pretty pokey. I collect her again though. I didn't want it. I actually like that knight, and I played it in the previous draft that failed. Um, but it's only a common. It's not like it's anything important. And then I don't think any of these are that good. I mean, normally in a draft, I would take the counter spell and get rid of it so it couldn't be used against me. But these drafting processes aren't the same as beating another, well, whatever, seven players around a table. It's about beating anybody who's got any kind of drafting whatsoever. Uh, let's get the eye collector because it's cheap. Uh, we can go with... You gain X life. Each opponent loses X life where X is the number of knights you control. It's not bad. Uh huh. And. Yeah, let's get the adventurers. Let's get the black green adventure out. And Cauldron's Gift. Um, if at least three black mana was spent to cast this spell, put the top four cards of your library into the graveyard. You may choose a creature card in your graveyard. If you do, return it to the battlefield with an additional 1 1 counter on it. So, well, that's good. That's good. Sacrifice an artifact, put 1 1. Sacrifice an artifact or another creature, put a 1 1 counter on Melvolent noble that's actually pretty cool for a new uh <laughs> nobles deck sacrificial peasants specter shriek oh yes yeah, specter shriek reveals a hand choose an online card exile a card if it's non-black is exile this way exile the card exile a card from your hand if non-black oh and then there's a spider with reach i think i'll go with the spider with reach memory theft or spider with reach. I think I'll go for two spiders with reach. Why not? Let's go with the tall as a beanstalk. And then we'll have that stick it into the sideboard out of the way. Lord Garenbrig. Looks awesome. Maybe he will be. I don't know. This one. Um, plus X plus X. Where, at the end of turn where X is his power. The tree folk put a two one one counters on target creature. Not bad. Reaper Knight, target opponent discards two cards. Pretty good in this format, but late on in game, not going to happen. Uh, Death Touch, yeah, nice. Let's go with the big bad, Legendary Giant Noble. Uh, we've got the option with the Headhunter again. Still don't think the option's that good. Forbidden Fruit is another one I've been looking at. Draw two cards and loses two life. Um could be good and wolf quarry is still too expensive return a knight card from graveyard to hand i think he's going to be the one really could be mono black that's the only problem is the mono black side uh this paladin if at least three green mana was spent he enters with a one one counter on him making a five five but it can't be blocked but it's 5-5 five, five for 5 if you spend green mana on him. Not because he's a 5-5 five, five for 5. Which puts me in a delicate situation that I'm balancing between 4 black and 4 green in these two cards alone. And that one then wants 3 green. It doesn't need it, but it wants 3 green for the bomb to drop. Um, but so is that or losing 2 life? And potentially gaining fruit, which can give me life back. I'm going to go with the Paladin. I need some bombs to drop. Next, we've got the Savvy Hunter. Yes. Trail of Crumbs. Is this any good? Uh, enter the battlefield. Create a food token. Whenever you sacrifice a food, you may pay one. If you do, look at the top two cards of the library. You may be a permanent card from one and put it in your hand for the rest of the bottom of any order. That's actually pretty cool. I like that. But I do prefer the Savvy Hunter a little bit better. And uh, next up, we've got Reaper. Discard two cards or gain X life, lose X life. It's a 2 1 life linker. Yes, Smitten Swordmaster all day. Uh, what have we got here? The uh, Malevolent. Um, Malevolent Noble. Um, Malevolent, isn't it? Malevolent Noble. Um, or Big as a Beanstalk. Four mana, Big as a Beanstalk again. Plus three, plus three. Which is good, and now I just picked up a lifelinker. Mm -mm -mm. Let's go tall as a beanstalk again. We're going with a kind of a black giant. 
We've got Forever Young. That's pretty good. Put any number of target card creature cards from your graveyard on top of your library and draw a card. Pretty good. Forever Young. Um, Gingerbread Cabin. When it enters the battlefield, untapped, create a food token. Pretty cool. There's also Weapon Rack, uh, which puts plus one, plus one counters onto creatures I control, which is nice. I think I'm going to go with the Gingerbread Cabin, though. I haven't seen that one before. And I'm not really that keen on any of the others. Memory Theft. I suppose I could get rid of them, but it's not too early game. Let's go with the Gingerbread Cabin, just so I've got it. Uh, Lash of Thorns. I think that's the one for this bit. Yes, Lash of Thorns for that pick. Uh, the Foreboding Fruit again. Another Tournament Grounds to get that out of the way. Uh, the tree folk, the gargoyle, and an idyllic grange. Okay. What do we got here then? Our rare for this final pack is Fan Folio of Fancies. I have no maximum hand side. Each player draws X card, put that number of cards equal to from graveyard. So it's a mill rare. I don't want a mill rare. Uh, three green giant. Can't be blocked by knights or walls. 5-5. Five, five, pretty good for 5. Uh, for 4, should I say. Uh, we've got the option here of the Reaper Knight, which is very expensive for the Reaper Knight. Or we've got another 1-5 Reach. I think the Rampart Smasher needs to be picked. Um, flying Vigilance. Artifact and Enchantment. Plus 1, plus 1. Yeah, that's good. But not for this deck. Um, <clears throat> this we've got the uh, rare from this pack as well available happy ever after enters the battlefield gain five life and draws a card at the beginning of your upkeep if there are five colors among permanents you control there are six or more card types among permanents you control and or in your graveyard and your life total is greater or equal to than your starting life total you win the game yeah that doesn't really look like it's going to happen each player gains five life and draws a card is a bit odd isn't it um that turn one, turn one, having a go at their hand, that's pretty good. Uh, transformation. Uh, enter the, the battlefield, draw a card. When it loses all abilities and is an elk with power and toughness, 3-3. Three, three. Loses all of the card types and creature types. So we could drop it on to um, the Faxian Intruder, maybe. Or the uh, eye collector. We could put it on the eye collector and turn the eye collector into it. Yeah. Out muscle. Put a 1 1 counter on target creature you control, then that fights target creature you don't control. Not too bad, but very expensive. The dragon. I haven't seen this dragon before. Looks pretty cool. The lock dragon. Um, must discard a card if you do draw a card. Not bad. Hmm. I think that will be okay though. It can get rid of an opponent creature and it can also boost one of mine. So let's take that for now. The Beanstalk Giant. Uh, I believe that's going to be a definite. Um, yeah. Reaper Knight again. Beanstalk Giant is the one. Uh, Curious Pair. Or the... Yeah, if I Death Touch. 2-3 Death Touch for 4. Deals combat damage, draw a card. Not bad. Let's go. Let's go with that. It's a it's a good one that needs sorting out. Um, that's gaining a mana of any colour, which could sort my mana base out early game. And that is unable to block. Scarecrow add one mana of any colour. Jousting dummy gets a bonus. Um, me, me, me. Let's just get the inquisitive puppet out for that one. Another intruder. Yes, another Fractian Intruder. Another Reaper Knight. Oh, it's too expensive. Another Foreboding Fruit. The Halberd. The Memory Veth. The Roving Keep. It's pretty cool looking. I probably won't use it. Fell the Peasant. Uh, the Pheasant, even. And a Beloved Princess. Okay, so we have a look. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. We weren't planning on using those anyway. Um, get rid of the roving keep. The idyllic grange. 
Looking good. Don't really want the tournament grounds. So we've got 16, 17 in total there. The gingerbread house. I'll probably drop that and go for 17 normal land. Um, Garrick, Beanstalk, Dryant. That's looking good at the top end. Cauldron's Gift. Maybe too much, but at the end game, maybe okay. These two three even might be very difficult to cast so I'm going to get rid of those because they look so difficult to cast and then these guys all look decent uh, return to nature might not be needed but still fell the pheasant five damage to target creature with flying could be very useful as a removal get some life link destroy power creature get the creature back memory feth I think I'm going to get rid of memory feth because by the time I'm going to cast it, I'm probably not going to be able to use it. Although a non-land card from the hand on turn 3 isn't too bad, I suppose. I'm getting a few on turn 1 there. Lash of Thorns can do a little bonus there. Eye Collector I'm going to get rid of. Um, going to get rid of the equipment. Um, going to get rid of the transformation. No. Keep that keep that keep that I want to keep everything now now I'm on 45 I'm want to keep everything um, that one's a 2-3 th death touch okay I like it but I'm going to drop it I'm going to drop it because I think I'm going to need other stuff going on um, I'm going to draw the keep the draw of the cards I'm okay with that I'm going to get rid of the pacifism type stuff and I'm going to get rid of destroying something or other. Oh, do I drop three more cards or do I keep them? I think I'm going to have to keep a couple of creatures. I'm going to keep those cards and I'm going to play 46 cards. I'm going to play 46 and see how it goes. We're going to have to sit back and allow them to attack. I hate that. I could have attacked 4-4 four, four versus 4-4, four, four, but he's got a 4-4 four, four first strike, so there's no point. These white are very, very difficult to beat. I am not going to block anything. I'm going to take this damage and hope that I draw something cool in the next turn. A land would be good. Tall as a beanstalk. Tall as a beanstalk. That is about as terrible as I can make it. <clears throat> but at least we can block the first strike. At least I can block the first strike. There's something. And I do have a lifelinker available at some point as well. Okay. It's got reach. Yeah. It's got reach and is a giant in addition to all types. Yes. Um, let's equip this to you. And again, no attacks. I got a good 10 damage on the board and no attacks made. Oh, and I've just seen my error in my ways. I can do two blockers. Those two blockers can take care of two of my opponent's creatures. The third will get through and it'll be four damage. Good game. Conceded. So, first time didn't go very well, did it? No, nope, not very well at all. I'm good at this game. I do sometimes feel like everyone else manages to draft... Just the same kind of cards as me, but everyone else's cards just seem to work better for them. Could that be my mistake? I don't know. It could be that I'm a, a terrible magic player, but I doubt that's true either. I actually think I'm not a bad magic player when it comes to constructing my own decks and playing with what I've got available. But how, uh, how this draft situation works is not 
what works well for me all the time. Um. I don't really want to do that, do I? Because I know I'll draw a card, but I don't really need to draw a card for any reason. I could just attack with the innkeeper. White again. White seems to be a bane of my existence. Everything but the colours that I've been playing. White and blue. There was a blue kind of mill, 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 and now there's a white knight deck. Um... I can turn it into a 3-3 beast with no other powers. A 3-3 elk. Mm -mm -mm -mm. If I use three black mana, it's even better. Uh... <laughs> oh, man. Let's, let's do this. Let's uh, target me. Let's use it for something for a change. I get some foreboding fruit again. I'm trying to get to another land, aren't I? And that was two cards that were not land. Uh, he's got a 2-2 two -two that gives other knights plus 2 plus 2. Uh, I've now potentially got this Fraxian Intruder. Whenever I cast a creature spell that has an adventure, draw. So let's do that. Draw a card. A black. Excellent. Three black. If I do the three black, I draw two cards and at least gain a fruit token as well. Which will allow me to get some life back. And then attack with the innkeeper. Okay, let's do that. Oh, he outflanks me. Dang it. <laughs> you see cards like that. Little things like that. And then big bad red knights. Red, white, black knights seems to be what he's going with here. Uh, no blocks. Uh, let's get another black land down. And <clears throat> um, he's got death touch. Put top four cards in your library. Choose a creature card. Return it to the battlefield. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Do need to smack something down, don't I? Three mana makes it a five-five, but a four-four is still going to start blocking here. This I could turn that into a three-three, um, which becomes no knight. It's not a knight then; it's a three-three, which then I could block with this. So let's make the four-four knight. That's also activating this adventure then, so we've got more chances to do things. Um, I will do no attack though, because if I can turn the elk into, uh, if I can turn his ogre into a three-three non-knight, then I can block it with a paladin. The aspiring vi uh, veteran isn't going to attack me while I've got this knight in play. Uh, creature with power two or less can't block it, so the veteran is useless as well. Opponent, hello. So I've got a lot of my my cards are online right now. These two don't do anything. Destroy target creature. Oh, the Black Knight. Oh, no blocks again. Hi, oh, yay, yay. And then I get a green. So yeah, I can't use that because I didn't get any knights. That Cauldron's Gift will bring that back out for me. With a plus one, plus one counter on it. That's got a death touch. Is that going to be enough? Cauldron's Gift has got to be... Got to be done. And what have I got to choose from? The Paladin Knight or him. Or the Tree Folk. Let's have a seven, six Tree Folk out, why don't we? Eh? It's not a knight, so I don't gain the life and all that. I don't use that curry favour. I should have picked maybe a knight for that. But still, I don't have a lot of knights in the deck. I should possibly change it out. Um, do we attack with a intruder? Yeah, let's attack with a intruder. If they're going to kill one of my creatures, they're going to kill one of my creatures, aren't 
they're gonna kill my creature, they're gonna kill my creature. It's as simple as that, I think. They kill the 7-6, they kill the 7-6. If they don't, I can start whittling down their forces and maybe start gaining some life. Uh, knights gain menace. So he's going to have that one give, gains menace. Okay. So I'm going to have to block that one. So he ends up getting two through. He's going to give it a boost, isn't he? He's going to give it something to boost it. And he's going to get two damage through. Well, at least that one's down. Um... Memory Theft can get rid of the knight that's in play as well. That knight... I think... Oh, I'm going to have to just drop a lifelinker. And... I feel like I should turn the intruder into a 3-3. But maybe I get rid of that other knight that they've got there. Okay, so we've got this Winterborn Knight. They've got a Cauldron's Gift as well. Uh, let's do that. And let's do that. Put both of them into there, out the way. And that's no attacks for today. So they've got the Cauldron's Gift, which allows them to bring back one of their graveyard creatures. But it did mean that I c they couldn't have Murderous Rider. Uh-huh. Let's go with you being... Uh, you being a 3-3 three, three instead of a 5-6. But you've got 4-4, I suppose. You don't have any abilities in that. And let's put this down. So we've got another death touch. And that'll do. Next combat. Do I attack? With a two lifelink, no attacks. End turn. Okay, I think at the end of this turn, I'm probably gonna sacrifice the food. Spirit Knight, Scry 2, go for it. I've got more cards in hand at the minute, but most of the cards that I've got in hand aren't going to be valid, apart from him in a minute. Pass to attackers. Are you going to attack? Are you going to attack? Okay, they got a 4-4. Four, four. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Sacrifice the food, gain three life, and then declare my blocks. So we will block the errant knight with that, the death toucher, and that'll get rid of both of them. We will play Lord Garal. Garenbrig. We'll play Lord Garenbrig. And we will declare no attacks. <clears throat> we are definitely on a back foot right now. They get a golden egg. Draw a card. Replace the itself. And they get a land. So they've got nothing still. Okay. Let us destroy destroy the golden egg I don't really think I need to um, let's make the swordsman as tall as our beanstalk potentially gain me some life uh Attacking with those two. Go. They're going to have to double block if they want to take care of either of them. Either way, I'm gaining five life back. 
could be the turning point of my game. They're double blocking the knight. Okay, so let's put the legion first, shall we? He's only a 3-4 because of that. He's a 3 otherwise. Yeah, we'll, we'll block it that way. We'll uh, take care of it that way. Okay. Switch a rude a little bit. That's good. Gain three life. Okay. Resolve. Could have destroyed it upon the trigger, but the sacrifice is the trigger, isn't it? Um, pass the blockers. No blocks. There you go. Take two. It's not going to block the sword smiter anyway, so why not, eh? Um, let's just attack. Boom, boom. Here we go. Do I want to? No, I decline. End turn. He's on a countdown clock now. A losing clock as well. Uh, whenever it attacks. Yeah. Okay. And so the flaxing intruder will gain a death touch in the next phase. Mm-hmm. Let's play that down. Um, it's going to have to go, isn't he? So let's take both of them and have a go. If he double blocks one... Yeah, he's done it that way around. Okay, so we will give you... 3-3 three, three death touch. And then we've got that sorted. Back up to 20 life with a 1-2. And he can tap any creature for 5 mana. Oh my days. Uh, I think I should probably return to nature and destroy... Destroy that artifact. Just to get rid of it. You can tap my creature if you want. It's already tapped. Yeah. Good job. Well done. Okay, another smitten sword knight thingy. Um, no point really doing that though. Let's just go in for one. Decline. And then play the lifelinker. Get another one of them out, lifelink. The smitten sword master. It's a pretty good card. I quite like it. If it was in a proper knight's deck, even better. Now I've got another useless card waiting for me. But at least I'm giving him a really quick clock now. I just sacrificed him. Good job. I clicked the wrong button. Oops. Um, let's see. And... Yeah, let's do that. Submit those three and draw a card. Which one am I going to get? Which order do I want them? I want that one on the top. No, I want that one on the top. Done. And then I'll cast that. And go. Boom! 1-1! One, one. Yeah! And ended on 26 life. How about that, eh? <laughs> the switcheroo. Okay. I get the Garruk out. That's just being greedy in it. I can get another land card out. That's okay. Let's cigar. So we've got nothing we can do turn one or turn two. We've got nothing that's any worthwhile nature whatsoever. We can get this uh, spider. And we can give it some death touch. And yeah. Give it death touch. A jousting dummy. Wow. Let's get that out. And let's get this guy out so we can block against the knight. Or the dummy. The scarecrow knight. I love it. There's a scarecrow and the knight. The knight bit gets us all the way now. Shining armor gives it some bonuses. Yeah. Still no point at attacking, was there? Right. Uh, Beanstalk giant. I can search my library for a land card. Put it on the battlefield. Uh, let's put another... 
Will the forest onto the battlefield. Now we're up to Garrick speed. Uh, there's no attacks coming from me. End the turn. If he attacks now, he's just going to get blocked. He's going to have to have something bigger to attack into the spider. Or a trick up his sleeve. Uh, two white creature tokens. Or two, two white creature token. Okay. He's still not going to bother attacking into the spider because I can just block it. So I'm just sitting there without that. Let's cut that down. And let's put Garak down. <laughs> Create two black creature I tokens. Game. Two wolf tokens. You cannot run or hide. No attacks. What do these wolf tokens do? When this creature dies, put a loyalty count on each Garak you control. Ha ha ha! So, so, so. Fortify. Wow, they're doing some stuff. Fortify, yes. Okay, so we can... We can block there. We can block there. Uh, what? They haven't got Menace. Uh, vigilance. Why can't I block that one? Enter the battlefield. This it's not attacking. That's why I can't block that one. Okay, fine. Uh, let's block there as well then. So we will destroy it with three damage. Boom, boom, boom. Two counters on Garok. Okay. Um, all right, now. Destroy target creature. And draw a card. Would work nicely. Destroy that creature. Draw a card. Yes, thank you. Play another land. Uh, we will have a Savvy Hunter. We will have a Rose Thorn Halberd. Yes. Making that a 3 6. And we will declare no attacks. We're going to let this opponent run out on us and keep making blockers. <laughs> We're going to have the Tall of a Beanstalk soon enough as well for the Savvy Hunter. So we can start attacking with the Savvy Hunter. Return a Knight card to your hand. Okay. Uh huh. Resolve. And pass the turn. Matan. Play the land. Yeah. We've got the Beanstalk Giant. Um, eight eight Beanstalk Giant. Let's get ourselves some more wolves. Oh, I just decided to lose. Okay. Well, I'm happy with a lot. I'm happy with the win. I go up a bronze tier limited rank, which I don't feel like I deserved. Getting Garrick in that first pack put me in these colours. And getting Garrick put me through to the next round, as it were. The next level. Now I'm gaining uh, 200 gems in one pack. Yeah, so I'm still going to gain a pack, but I'm gaining 200 gems, which is pretty valuable. They're the real money sort of thing. Let's see how we get on in the next match. Oh man, today's Magic the Gathering video has taken far longer than I ever expected. Going through two draft processes, going through two drafts, has left me wondering what it is that I'm actually doing with my day. Uh, I mean, this is, this is playable. And I've got removal. And I've got creatures. And I can do things with it all. It's okay. And not until turn three. I can't really do anything. Uh, but that's good enough. I can now destroy a target creature with power 3 or less as a sorcery speed if I should need. And I can bring out a spider. Are oh, we against red as well? Ooh, what's going to be red? Red Knights was about all I saw when I was drafting red myself. Red Knights are pretty powerful though. You watch Red Knights go and beat me now. You watch it. I, I got a feeling that they're just going to start getting up to like Three or four mana, and boom. Yes, that was the creature that I picked in my game earlier. <gasps> but I get a Garrick. It's all over, isn't it? It's all over. I got a Garrick. Um, um, now what to do with it, though? I 
Double striking is okay. I don't need to do anything. I don't need to do anything because at the moment that raging red cap has nothing but a spider that it can't kill in front of it. It's got some blue. I need to play that and Garrick coming out very soon. Um, do, 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 do. Resolve. Equipped creature gets plus one plus two. Whenever you draw a second card each turn, attach it to a creature you control. Reserve. Okay. So now it's got four in the double strike range. Still going to die. Um, yeah. And then give it some of that. And die. Thank you. And goodbye. Okay, so we're up to five mana now. Beanstalk. I can search my library for a land. It can be a black land because that's three of each then, in case I need those. And I've got that attack spell, uh, the uh, Reeve Soul online, and Garrick online for next episode. Next episode? Next turn, should I say. Corridor Monitor. Enter the battlefield. Untap target artifact or creature you control. Okay. You can equip it for three. You can equip it for three. I've just taken out the things that kill stuff like that as well. Uh, Garrick, Cursed Hunter. Now, if I destroy target creature... Let's play a game of hide and seek. If I destroy target creature, he won't be able to equip it next time. And I get to draw a card as well. Nice. Try not to lose your head out here. And then just attack for one, because why not, eh? I bet he's going to get something hasty out. But if he gets hasty out, he can't equip as well. Oh, he I killed Garrick with some dragon fire. Anyway. Oh, maybe I should have gone up a little bit first. Now that planeswalker's gone forever. Oh, that was my win con. <laughs> what am I doing now? I'm just going to give up. Well, at the minute, I'm uh, in a lead position. What? Oh, man. Just made my spider so tiny. Still a, a five blocker. Essentially a zero five blocker. Destroy target artifact was not the thing it was looking for. Um, let's go with a big paladin. Pay it all. Pay it all. And no attacks. Now we've got a 5-5. Five five. We're first to get a 5-5. Five five. I can also make it taller and bigger and nastier. You got to do the Savvy Hunter to get some life back as well. Oh, you get... Okay, so Savvy Hunter. Going to have to have a lot of removal spells at this rate, isn't he? Let's put that on there. Make him a giant and attack for two. Ha 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 ha! And we are up to uh, the ability to cast the beanstalk giant out as well, which will then be a seven-seven. Oh, lovely! Seven-seven beanstalk giant. We have a giant spider, spider giant. Shall we? Should I say? And he's going to turn that into a pumpkin. <laughs> and then equip that to make it a 3-3. And presumably attack. Yes, for three. Very good. Okay, we are going to destroy the creature with power three or less. Because it's there and we need to do stuff like that all the time. And then attack. For two. A whole two damage. Next turn. We're going to do something beanstalk, probably. There's the options. Beanstalk or beanstalk. Two, three is still not bad. Not great, but not bad. And burn spells. I think they've probably used a fair few burn spells already. So the likelihood is they don't have another burn spell. Should we do that? 
Yeah, we do that. And then we can still do this. And we draw a card off that. Boom. And we can turn him into a 9-9 almost immediately. Uh, and then... All attack. Make a food token. And go boom, boom, boom. Yes. Down to nine. Can we keep up the win streak? We've gotten definitely on the back foot now. He's going to put it to sleep. Oh. Put my giant to sleep? Really? All of the removal spells and these little tiny fairy creatures having a go. Well, they had a little human knight as well. The 10 10. Let us make the innkeeper. As big as a giant. And attack. I'll attack in. Lots of threats. Yes, lots of threats. Go. Death. Destruction. <laughs> oh, wow. Magic, eh? Magic. Okay, so. Another draft. I can't believe that the video is extending out beyond the normal parameters because of a win streak. I suppose that's the problem with um, doing the draft. I mean, sometimes I could do a draft video where I just draft the cards and then lose, lose, lose. But I've got some really cool cards out of it. Um, and then other times I can win, win, win. And uh, get some more cards out of it, but it takes forever to play. And look at this one. This is, this is a decent and again. I do like these spore cap spiders. I mean, they can block just about anything. They only do one damage, but they can block just about anything. And the Innkeeper is a pretty famous card by now for the uh, OP nature. Especially when you're casting uh, creature spells that has adventures on. Because there's lots of them around in this set. And many of them are green. So it's very good for taking the Innkeeper and going, Yes, all the things, please, Innkeeper. Give me all the things I'm asking for. Uh, let's go and get that card drawn. I mean, I hardly ever do the three bears, to be fair. And then back. Boom. Alright, so. We've got two little weenies. Green weenie creatures out. But we drew a card, so we've got a card advantage. We've got a couple of mana down. They're going to draw a card. They've now gained an equal amount of card advantage. We could spore cap spider. And attack for two. Yes. We're winning. Yes. Uh, do I choose to? Destroy their egg. Uh, 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 uh. They've got to sacrifice the egg anyway, aren't they? Uh, it's your go, mate. Your go. Your go. Come on, your go. Hurry up. <laughs> you want to hurry me up with that uh, trigger? I was looking at your dragon egg. Uh, well, your dragon egg. Your golden egg. I was looking at your golden egg thinking about whether I should blow it up or not. Whenever Ice Queen deals combat damage to a creature, tap that creature. It does not untap during its step. Okay, well, I don't think I need to worry about that too much. Let us smash her with... With a 3-3. Three, three. Making a 4-4. Four, four. And run out Victor's. Going to block that one. Take 4 then. And that doesn't untap. Oh, Rather that than the innkeeper who's coming in for four. See what I did there? I attacked, gave him a secondary target. The Ice Queen's not a bad card to be fair, but tapping a creature down isn't all the best. It's not a great strategy. Although Millen's not a great strategy, but they still uh, win games and I hate Mill. Well, hate is probably a strong word. I've not... Oh, really? You're going to sleep, charm me? Freeze me, do it all like that. Okay, well, we have the adversary coming out to see you. And no attacks because my Frexian, in, Frexian Intruder, Goldilocks, is not good enough to attack into the Ice Queen. The Ice Queen's going to attack into me now, though. That charmed leap. Oh, if I get through, I can destroy the enchantment. What was that? A bog naughty. A 3-3 three, three flying. Sacrifice food. Target creature gets minus 3, minus 3 until the end of turn. That's pretty pokey, isn't it? 
I like that. I've got a deck in mind for that as well. Uh, smitten Sword Knight. I've got any knights. I don't have any knights. And this gives my life for knights. It is a life linker though. Um, okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Let's attack in with all of them. The adversary gets through. I draw a card. The intruder gets through. I release the innkeeper. These two both take out one spider thing. Okay. So I do that. I will take that action. And destroy that sleep to undo the sleep spell and I will draw a card from that okay and then I will play uh, a savvy hunter and say forever young maybe no I don't really need a forever young just yet put any number of target creature cards from your graveyard on top of your library and draw a card I don't really need that yet, do I? I could just bring out the life linker instead, though. Just so I can overwhelm the attack. Overwhelming attack. That's what we're talking now. Just slip by with two creatures extra per turn hitting home. Okay, one creature per turn hitting home. Oh. Target creature. Opponent controls. Yeah. So we've lost the innkeeper for a second there. Put the innkeeper back down. And then play the Acolyte. Draw another card. Transforming who? Mm -mm -mm. Transforming them into a 3-3? Three, three? Yeah. It's one mana of any colour. Don't really need that. That's a death touch there. That creates food. Hmm. I think that one needs to be turned into a 3-3 that can't kill my creatures. So I'm going to turn that into a 3-3 that can't kill my creatures. Thank you. And then... If I'm attacking in with that lot, I've got a Death Toucher, I've got a Life Linker, and I'm... Yeah. I've still got the advantage. I can potentially eliminate some of their creatures. I know I've got this tree folk coming up soon as well. So keep the pressure on. Right, so the Savvy Hunter gets taken out. The Swords Master also gets taken out. And the Bog Naughty gets taken out. So all three of mine die, one of theirs dies. Okay, pressure was on. Two versus two. I can now... Bring back a few creatures and draw a card if I want. With my forever ever young. Forever ever young. Oh, got that one again. Uh, Noblux. And the Eye Collector. <laughs> I don't know why that card is good. Uh, Soul Reeve, destroy that creature there. Got to, because that's going to be nasty. Um, and then put two counters on a creature. Oh, it needs it needs the power of that, so that's no good. Forever young. Let's take you back, you back, you back, you back. Submit all four. Do I want all four? Yes, I do. Submit all four and put them back in the order of this. Because I can play both of those in the next phase. Okay, play this. Boom. Draw another card. Thank you. Play this. Yes. Thank you. Draw another card. Thank you. And no attacks. <laughs> GG. 
All right, so Savvy Hunters on the top of my library. That card there, that Bog Naughty and a Savvy Hunter combo in a deck that's around food would be really nice. Sacrifice of food, target creature gets minus three, minus three until the end of the turn. I like that. I should invest some. I should invest some uncommons in that bog naughty. That's pretty cool. Into the story. Alrighty. A milling. A milling. Uh huh. Oh, more milling. Just generate a load of blockers. So what do we do about this? Do we defend against it and try and build up five damage? Or do we wait until our death touch can block it? We wait until our death touch can block it. We can take four damage right now. Let's have our death touch blocking. Okay, we're going to drop the death touch warrior as our blocker. We're going to put two counters on. The Swordsmaster, who's got Lifelink. I'm going to play that. And then we are going to attack in for 4 3. Let them double block. One block, two block. Okay, we will do the damage in that way we will destroy the queen leave the overwhelmed apprentice where he is and destroy the queen that was a fair trade i suppose i gained four life from it as well fair trade now they've got hardly any attackers on the board see i would have blocked with the merfolk secret keeper and just lost the blocker but no, 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 not them. Stolen by the Fae. No, I've been stolen. And 411 Fairies. Oh, my days. Um, just comment on Mr. Player. Each player puts the top card of the library into the graveyard. Okay. Um, I'm, 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 no blocks. I can't believe there's so many fairies on the table now. Well, I lost a land. Don't know about you, lad. Uh, shall I... Let's drop that. Just get rid of whatever card you've got in your hand. Is it a black one? Got a problem? It's not a black one. Uh, it is that one that does the uh, four five though. And that means I got to get rid of this death touch. Yeah, but it does mean I can still play a big tree folk. And then we got Garrick next. No attacks. Mm -mm -mm. End the turn. Garrick's going to have to do a lot of work, isn't he? How, what, what am I going to do to make Garrick work well? I got the 2-2 two -two wolves. That's going to hurt a little bit. It's gonna bake it in a pie. Baked into a pie. Okay, so the flyers we can't deal with, but we can deal with that scavengers. We can deal with the scavengers. So let us just take care of everything. Oh, take care of everything. Block everything. Take care of that thing. And then we've got these little one ones to deal with in the future. Which Garrick can kind of do something with, but not most, not more than likely doing everything. Bum ba dum, bum bum bum. Didn't that one block as well? Uh, 
and Garrick, just because. Alright, so we've got five flying damage coming in at Garrick. There's not a lot I can do to sort that out. Um, doing zero wolves is not great you either. Ever listen to the crickets? That's my kind of music. I mean, they can just fly in and take out five damage from Garrick. Which is a good thing, in one way. But if I destroy one of these creatures and draw a card, then I'm going to be on two damage. So there's no point destroying a creature either. So I may as well have these wolves out and use them as chump blockers for a bit. You cannot run or hide. No attacks. Okay, they're definitely winning. They are clearly beating me right now. I've only just got Garrick down. Gain me some life. Uh. And then get hit below. Top card in the graveyard. Dum dum dum. Oh, it was a life linker. Followed by a load of rubbish. Five cards left in the grave. Oh. No! Four cards left in my library, thanks to the mill. No real anything going on attack-wise for me. Garrick, no. They're going to just fly over for five damage in the following turn. This could be the last-ditched attempt to do nothing or something. I've got two ground base blockers. They're going to block those wolves on there because there's nothing they can do to stop that. And they're going to do that. Which means the wolves aren't going to knock Garrick up. And nothing's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All four of those, and the Eye Collector, coming in for five damage. I don't think there's anything I can possibly draw that's going to make any difference to this. Ouch. Three cards remaining. Do I end up milling myself out? Do I end up milling myself out? There's no way I can kill them within a few draws, is there? That eye collector is going to kill me off. Two solid cards sitting there. If I destroy and... Dis yeah, I'm dead. There's nothing I can do but concede the match. The bronze mill defeated me. Okay. Well, um, I had a good time drafting, and I've got a fairly decent reward in 300 gems and a pack going forwards. I will claim that prize, and I'll be happy enough with that. So now the pack that we open, let's have a little look, see what we get. We have, uh, of course, my two favourite cards that I picked up during that. Uh, well, the first, the spider. Revenge of Ravens, decent. Wicked Guardian, 
enters the battlefield, you may have to deal two damage to another creature you control if you do draw a card. Well, okay. And then the castle that adds six mana. Yes. Awesome. All right, then. So that is it for today's episode. Um, I do have some new decks to play around with for future episodes. But for right now, that is all we've got time for, folks. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Um, maybe a little bit longer than normal. I haven't edited it yet. Probably cut out a few bits and pieces that were boring. And uh, me losing a lot. That's probably uh, a good thing to avoid. So, uh, yeah. Tune in next time for some more Magic the Gathering Arena. Goodbye.